for this section of the course we'll be solving trigonometric equation as in all equations we're trying to find the value for the variable that makes our equation true for our trigonometric functions the first thing we probably want to do is to get that trigonometric function by itself so we want to get sine x by itself cosine x by itself tan x by itself or even cosecant x by itself or the inverse secant by itself or cotan by itself so our first step is to always try and get that trig function by itself then we're going to use our inverse function to find the angle so we're still trying to find our variable so x here will be the arc sine of whatever we have here similar x will be the cosine arc cosine of this number here and x would be the arctan of whatever we have here also if our functions were in terms of cosecant so if we have cosecant x we could use the inverse of cosecant which is 1 over sine and then find the arc sine of x Let's demonstrate this by looking at this example. Here we're asked to solve for cosine of x is equal to 2. So our first step is to get the cosine function by itself. To get the cosine function by itself, we can divide both sides by 4. So here our 4 will cancel. And we'll have the cosine x is equal to 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half. Our second step is to get x by itself. So x is equal to the arc cosine of 1 half. The arc cosine of 1 half is the angle whose cosine is 1 half. When you go back to our unit circle, at pi over 3 radians, our coordinates are 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. So the arc cosine of 1 half would be pi over 3. Now, because it was never specified that we're going from 0 to 2 pi, this equation actually has infinite solution. If we were to go from here all the way back to here, now we have pi over 3 plus 2 pi which takes us back to the same coordinates. So pi over 3 plus 2 pi will give us a cosine of 1 half also. And if we continue around, this becomes pi over 3 plus 4 pi. And the cosine of pi over 3 plus 4 pi would also be equal to 1 half. So we realize for these equations we have infinite solutions and for cosine function it will always be in the form of x is equal to theta plus 2 pi n where n is an integer so if n is equal to 1 then it becomes 2 pi because n is equal to 2 then we have 4 pi if n is equal to 3 then we have 6 pi to represent the infinite solutions Similarly, if you recall, the arc cosine of 1 half is also in the fourth quadrant because the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. So a second solution for this equation would be 5 pi over 3. Because we also have infinite solutions for this, this becomes 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So, our two solutions for this then would be that x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2 pi n or x is equal to 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. This same scenario will also occur for our sine function since our sine function also has a period of 2 pi.
Here we have two additional examples of solving trigonometric equation. Our first example is that we have the square root of 3 times cosecant of x minus 2. So our first thing we're going to do is to isolate that trig function. So we're going to try and get cosecant x by itself. We can achieve that by adding 2 to both sides. So if we add 2 to both sides, we get square root of 3 cosecant x plus 2. And then if we divide by the square root of 3, so if we divide all this by the square root of 3, we have cosecant x is equal to 2 over the square root of 3. We know cosecant is inverse of sine, so this becomes sine of x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. This is a positive value for sine x, so we know sine is positive in our first and second quadrant, where sine x or where x is equal to the sine inverse of square root of 3 over 2 would be pi over 3, so x is equal to pi over 3. And because this has infinite solution, this would be pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. In our second quadrant, where the arc sine of square root of 3 over 2 would be 2 pi over 3. And once again, because of our infinite solution, this is 2 pi n. In this example, we're once again going to try and isolate that trig function, which will be our cosine x. So we can add 1 to both sides and divide by 4. So here we end up with cosine squared x is equal to a positive 1 fourth. If we take the square root of both sides, if you remember, recall from our square root property, once we take the square root, this becomes plus or minus. So we end up with cosine of x being equal to plus or minus 1 half, since the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. So here, we're trying to find x, which arc cosine is equal to plus or minus 1 half. From our unit circle, we know that cosine 1 half would be equal to pi over 3, and the arc cosine of negative 1 half would be 2 pi over 3. Cosine of pi over positive one half is also equal to five pi over three, and the cosine of negative one half would also be equal to four pi over three. So our solution then for x could be x is equal to pi over three plus, and in general, we would say x is equal to pi over three plus 2 pi n since we're coming back to this point. But this and this will be the same. So if we go from here back to here, this will be plus 2 pi again. So to simplify this, since these are directly across from each other, we could just keep adding pi n instead of 2 pi n to here, or starting here, and 2 pi n to here. So pi n plus pi n plus pi n plus. So this becomes plus pi times n. Or, x is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus pi plus pi plus pi, so we could say plus pi n once again. So for this equation, x is equal to pi over 3 plus pi n, or x is equal to pi 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. Here we have an equation in which we're told to solve for x and we have 2 secant squared x plus tan squared x minus 3 is equal to 0. And we're told that our solutions lie in the interval of 0 to 2 pi. Now as we have done before, we're going to try and isolate our trig function. However, in this problem we have two different trig functions. So we're going to use our fundamental identities to rewrite this in either tans, uh, tan x or secant x. We know from our 
Pythagorean identities that secant squared x is equal to 1 plus tan squared x. So we can replace this with 2 times 1 plus tan squared x. And now we still have tan squared x, and if we bring over 3, is equal to 3. By distributing this, we get 2 plus 2 tan squared x plus tan squared x is equal to 3. If we subtract the 2 from both sides, we will get 1. 2 from both sides, we will get 1. And then we could combine these two since there is our like terms. So here we have 3 tan squared x is equal to 1. Now we have a single trig function. We can now isolate the tan x by dividing both sides by 3 and then finding the square root of both sides. So if we divide by 3, we get tan squared x is equal to 1 third. And taking the square root of both sides, we get plus or minus the square root of 1 third. By rationalizing the denominator, we get plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. So here we have tan x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So now we're required to find x. We know x is equal to the tan inverse or arctan of plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. Now, if they did not specify our function, then our answer would actually uh, have been theta. X would have been theta plus pi n because our pair for our tangent function is pi. Or <coughs> and um, for cosine and sine would be 2 pi. So for tan, if our period is not specified, our interval is not specified, then we know x is equal to theta plus pi n. For sine and cosine, this would be been theta plus 2 pi n. The good thing is that they gave us our interval. So we know. Now where is, which angle gives us a tan inverse of square root of 3 over 3? This would be pi over 6. So here we have x is equal to pi over 6. <coughs> this is also in our second quadrant. We would get 5 pi over 6. So here we have plus and minus. But if you recall from our unit circle, we have pi over 6. This will give us our positive square root of 3 over 3. And that 5 pi over 6, we have our negative square root of 3 over 3. But, going back to our unit circle, we know that tangent is also positive in this quadrant. So this would be 5, 6, 7, 7 pi over 6. And our tangent is also negative in this, so this would be 11 pi over 6. So this equation actually has four solutions, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. These two, pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, are from the positive square root of 3 over 3, and these two are from the negative square root of 3 over 3. And here we have our four solutions.